GLC Media Production. God didn't just ignited a message inside me about wisdom. And um, what I heard and what God ignited me from within is this. Wisdom brings wealth. Now, when I say wealth, it's not just money. Wealth is everything. Wealth is, is holistic. It takes care of every aspect of your life. The key to wealth, however, is not faith. It's wisdom. Hallelujah. And the opposite of wisdom is foolishness. As I was preparing this message over this weekend, um, I was asking myself, what is foolishness? Foolishness is the absence of the wisdom of God. It's not the absence of wisdom. It's the absence of the wisdom of God. You see, the wisdom of God is very different to the wisdom of man. Wisdom of man can come from universities. Wisdom of man can just come from people's, you know, own logic. Wisdom can come even from facts, from knowledge. But the wisdom of God comes from above and supersedes all things. You see, I want you to know during this political situation that we are facing, I'm not listening to the news. Because when I listen to the news, what's happening is man's wisdom, man's opinion is coming into my mind. And it is very important that I shut that off and I listen to the wisdom of God. Only then I can function accordingly. I can pray accordingly. Here and there I listen to opinions. But I am not reading newspapers these days. I am not putting on the TV. Because my mind is getting bombarded with man's opinion. And I'll tell you, man's opinion, man's wisdom will end up in destruction. Because the word of God says, many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the will of God that will prevail. Amen. The plans of man will lead to destruction. But the wisdom of God will lead to everlasting life. Now, we are not talking, we are not here this evening to talk about politics. We are here to talk about your personal life and how you're going to prosper, how you're going to be established. And we're going to learn from the Word of God uh, um, how and, and why we're going to do this. In Isaiah 33 and verse 6, it says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Oh, I'll tell you, when God spoke this to me on Friday night, I just felt in my spirit, this is a, a word in season. The whole nation is going through such an unstable time. But here the word of God says, wisdom, the wisdom of God and the knowledge of God shall be the stability of thy times. You don't have to go through unstable times because wisdom will stabilize you. Amen. And then it goes on to say, And the strength of, this, of salvation, the fear of the Lord as his treasure. So, all of this is encompassed in wisdom. So, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the strength of thy times, and strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord is, is his treasure. So, I want you to understand that in times of instability, you have got to go deep into your salvation. When I say deep into your salvation, you've got to know who you are. That you are a child of God and that your future lies in the hand of God. Now I know at, at the same time, I know there are people who say that, who confess that, my, uh, uh, that their life is in the hand of God. But I want you to know, in order for you to walk in the plan of God, you must have wisdom. I don't know about you. But I've done some foolish things in my life. Have you? What has foolishness brought us? Destruction. What has wisdom brought us? Stability and strength. Now at the end of this meeting, we are going to pray. And we are going to say, God, I'm going to stand not in my wisdom, nor in the wisdom of the world, but in the wisdom of God. So God, I'm asking you to give me this wisdom. Now, Jeremiah 51 and verse 15, 
He hath made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom and has stretched out the heavens by his understanding. These there are three key power words in this scripture. It says he made his the the earth by power. He established the world by his wisdom and stretched out the heavens by his understanding. Power, wisdom and understanding are the three power words. Amen. Now here God is talking about how he created the world. How are you going to create your world? You also have a world. Amen. And you have been you are the architect. God gives the plan. But you are the architect. You are the one that has to move uh, uh, in your world creating what God has instructed you. In order for this to happen, you need power. Amen. Do you need power? Yes. Number 2, do you need wisdom? Yes. Number 3, do you need understanding? Yes. Hallelujah. Now I want to to give you uh another beautiful scripture starting from Job 28 and verse 12. Here Job is asking a question. But where can wisdom be found? But where can wisdom be found? Where does understanding dwell? Now this is a very very important scripture. A script a question that you have to ask yourself. Where can wisdom be found? Can you tell me where where wisdom can be found? Can you tell me where understanding dwells? It dwells in the spirit world. Amen. But unless and until you go into the spirit world and you dig into that resource, you will not have the wisdom of God. There is wisdom above you. There is wisdom among you. but until you dig deep into that wisdom that wisdom will not come into you you must go in the spirit you must go through the word of god and you must cry out to god for wisdom when you do that your life will come to another level you become stable you become strong you become prosperous you become wealthy you become healthy because wisdom the bible says in the book of ecclesiastes ecclesiastes is the principal thing amen wisdom will bring you everything that god wants you to have because without wisdom you can do nothing amen and here and here the scripture says or in that earlier uh, scripture it says that god created all things through wisdom amen and jesus himself is called wisdom amen No it's not that Jesus has wisdom Jesus is wisdom Where does Jesus live inside you And therefore wisdom dwells inside you You know every day I'm coming to to understand this amazing mystery You see all of us we we judge our own minds we judge our intelligence and we think this is what we can do this is how we can think But you see You have you have a wealth of wisdom inside you that allows you and gives you access to the greatest wisdom of this universe. But you have to dig deep into that wisdom. You've got to tell yourself every day, I'm not going with the wisdom of my own natural brain. I'm not going to go with the wisdom of this world. I'm going to dig deep in my spirit. and i'm going to get the wisdom of god do you know my daily fight and do you know your daily fight the fight to push back foolishness amen every single day you have a battle against foolishness what is foolishness the absence of the wisdom of god the world can tell you This is the greatest plan. When you look at the facts, it can be the greatest plan. But you see if it has does not come from God, it is considered foolishness. And foolishness ends up 
in disaster can we can you how many of you can testify to that that you've done foolish things that have ended up in disaster i'm going to be the first one to raise my hand amen so we are all agreed on that how many of you can say wisdom has prospered you anybody amen your daily fight therefore is a fight against foolishness i'm not going to use my natural brain i'm not going to use the wisdom of the world i'm going to dig deep in my spirit and i'm going to get the wisdom of almighty god amen you know these last few weeks god is helping me to come to a new level of understanding where wisdom is concerned just last week you know on that poor day I uh, I came to work and uh, I had some things to do. And uh, I called another colleague of mine. I said let's work on for a day and we sat down and the moment I sat down I said to him I said I can't do what I what we plan to do. I said I've got to write a letter. He said what? I said no I've got to do this document. Now I came here not to do the document to do something else. but the spirit of the lord told me don't do that do this and you know what i re- i sat down and in 30 minutes i wrote this amazing report when i finished it and i looked at it i was i was amazed at what 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 had come out and i know beyond any shadow of doubt that it was a result of wisdom But you see if I had said no I'm not going to do that I'm going to sit with my colleague and do the work that I had planned to do I'd have missed it Wisdom comes to you at unpredictable times You have to be sensitive to the spirit to know hey I've, something is happening in my spirit there's a wisdom that's coming no 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 let me write this down I have found that when I postpone writing down the things that are bubbling in my spirit by the next day is not bubbling anymore amen and i wrote this down and actually the last two days i was reading it over and over again just amazing myself because i know that it it is beyond my natural ability the biggest foolishness that we have is that we have natural abilities those natural abilities are very limited you and i know we have to take this brain out of our mind out of our head put it under our feet and take into us the mind of christ the mind that is unlimited amen and this wisdom comes at unpredictable times as i said you have to be quiet and you've got to have a deep deep thought process and out of your spirit will come wisdom you know recently i lost my passport and you know when you lose your passport it's not easy i had valid visas and i told everybody to pray and panic was starting to bubble up and i made a decision god will reveal it to me now he never revealed it to me for two weeks the reason is i didn't have time to sit and listen to him so the other day i went home a little early i got into my bed i said god speak to me okay show me where my passport is and i just went deep inside my spirit sudden any way it was you see why why are we worried about wisdom when wisdom dwells inside you amen wisdom dwells inside you in the name of jesus all you have to do is by faith push aside foolishness what is foolishness the absence of the wisdom of god foolishness is about taking worldly wisdom over god's wisdom and then going deep into your own spirit 
Now Mike Murdoch, he is a modern day King Solomon. He's a man of great wisdom uh, and he has written many books. He's, he's a wisdom apostle. He's got the most incredible wisdom and he's written hundreds of books on various topics concerning wisdom. And when you read these books, oh my goodness, you are just so enriched. And uh, wisdom has made him very wealthy, extremely wealthy. He told us a key. He said when he wakes up in the mornings, he said he sits in a chair for about 45 minutes. He said he doesn't move. He doesn't scratch his head. He doesn't have a coffee. He sits still. And he said wisdom from within him begins to flood his mind. You see, wisdom doesn't come when you're rushing around, fulfilling your daily duties. Wisdom comes when you are still in the right moment at the right time, in the right place. And you go to God and say, God, I want wisdom. You understand what I'm saying? What will wisdom bring? Stability. It will bring strength. And ultimately, wisdom brings holistic wealth. James 3 verse 17. Oh, this is a beautiful scripture. But the wisdom that is from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, then gentle, then willing to yield, full of mercy, full of good fruit, without partiality and without hypocrisy. When this wisdom comes, it is like taking a spiritual bath. Your eyes open. You feel at peace, peace that passeth all understanding. You know exactly what to do. Even in times of trouble caused by foolishness. You know, in times past, I've got into trouble because of foolishness. But a prophet of God once said to me, What you have lost through foolishness, he will redeem through wisdom. So whatever you have lost through foolishness, the key to redemption is wisdom. Wisdom from above. Amen. Amen. Now, just the other day, we were discussing about this young girl who got married outside of the wisdom of God and got into a huge problem. Now, there's no way out. But if foolishness got her into this pit, wisdom will bring her out. What wisdom? The wisdom of God. John 3 and verse 8. This scripture confirms what I told you earlier. The timing of wisdom is unpredictable. Amen. I have gone to certain meetings, I've gone to certain discussions, and I have felt like I don't know anything. But when I go there, wisdom comes in the most unpredictable times. John 3.8 says, The wind blows where it wishes. And you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it, it, where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. You see, if you are born of the Spirit, and I know every one of you is, you are unpredictable. Why? Because you are a spirit being. You are moving with God. And you go as the wind blows. The spiritual wind blows. No one can predict what you will do next week, what I will do next week. Why? Because we are led by the Spirit. So wisdom comes at the opportune time, at unpredictable times. You have to be just open to it. Amen. Just at the time when you are facing the bank, wisdom will come. Expect it. Sometimes you can be, you know, spending, you can spend seven days on a document. And just before you send it out, wisdom will come to include one sentence. That one sentence tips the scales. If you're not comfortable about sending out a document, don't send it. Keep it and pray and say, God, give me wisdom. 
You see, wisdom creates. Wisdom created the world. And the enemy cannot resist, uh, cannot but resist, or, or cannot resist wisdom. Wisdom pushes out the enemy in Jesus' name. Wisdom is a defense according to the book of Ecclesiastes. Let's go to Psalms 104 and verse 24. Oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your riches. Now here we see the connection between wisdom and wealth. Amen. Can you see that? Wisdom will bring wealth. You know, I had a, a, somebody just WhatsApped a message to me last week. You know, one of these good morning messages. I, I don't know who. But God spoke to me through that. You know what he said? God will wreck your plans when he knows that your plans are going to wreck you. <laughs> oh, I tell you, it's happened to me. Why? Because he can see foolishness in you. And when he sees that, he will wreck your plans. Because if he doesn't wreck your plans, ultimately your plans will wreck you. I want to go, I want us to go to Job 28 and verse 12. But where shall wisdom be found and where is the place of understanding? Man knows not the price of it. You know, this is the foolishness of the church. Man does not appreciate the value of God's wisdom. And I want us as a church to move from, away from this foolishness. To say, God, I know nothing. And therefore, I am depending on your wisdom. I want you to know, take your plans and put it under your feet. And go with the plans of God. If your plans have been wrecked by God, don't go and put it together. Because let me tell you something. What God destroys, you cannot put back. If God has destroyed it, stop wasting your time. And if God hasn't destroyed it, <laughs> one day it will resurrect. In Jesus' name. Man knows not the price of it, neither is it found. Oh, hold on. Neither is it found in the land of the living. Now this is the, the foolishness of the church. The church does not know the value of wisdom. And they don't know that the wisdom of God does not, cannot be found in the land of the living. Where can it be found? In the land of eternity. In the spirit. Hallelujah. You know, uh, Pastor Sean was sharing with me something that Bill Winston had uh, had said something very profound, and I was thinking I couldn't understand it at first, but I was, I was thinking about it. It, it uh, you know, it it, it it kind of really resonated in my spirit. And uh, Bill Winston had said, you know, if you take uh, your phone and you go to Google and you speak, okay, Google will speak back to you because. All the, all the information you need is already programmed into Google. And when you speak, whatever is programmed speaks back to you. Now, when you speak to the spirit realm and you say, God, give me wisdom. The wisdom that you need is already programmed in the spirit realm and lives inside you. And that wisdom will speak back to you. I mean, isn't that an amazing uh, analogy? The wisdom you need is living inside your spirit and is activated by questions. All you have to do is say, God, tell me this. Now you might say, but pastor, I'm not so spiritual. I'll give you a... I want to come back to this, but let me give you a, another scripture. James chapter 1 verse 5. Now if any of you, now this is the amplified version, if any of you is deficient in wisdom, any, does anybody lack wisdom in this place? Do you lack wisdom? I'm talking about in anything. Yes, of course, we all lack wisdom. Because every day we need new, new wisdom. Let him ask of the giving God, who gives to everyone liberally, 
and ungrudgingly without reproaching or fault finding now this i tell you is a ground breaking scripture because here he says if any of you lacks wisdom you can ask god and god gives it without judging you he doesn't withhold it he is liberal he doesn't fault find he doesn't you know grudge it he's not he doesn't give it grudgingly can you understand what i'm saying he gives it liberally so why are we not asking because we'd rather find it in the newspaper or we'd rather find it in google now when you go into the wisdom of god god may tell you go to this particular place in google i had a a, a life situation that i was battling with for about 6 7 years many years ago and i i couldn't find the the answer for this there there was a question there was a problem and and i had to find a solution and i was trying to find solutions and i was going to different counselors and and people and one day god spoke to me and he said go to this particular site and when i went to this site the solution for everything that i need was in there i mean nobody nobody told me nobody had the knowledge to tell me but god led me there and that information has stabilized me i tell you like nothing else wisdom brings stability wisdom brings strength wisdom brings prosperity and there are many businessmen here the only thing you lack is wisdom because the scripture says wisdom is the principal thing now i i want to just i mean these are questions that i had in my mind i was saying to god god look at that person he doesn't love you he doesn't give to anybody but look at how he's prospering and look at so and so who loves you loves people and he's giving but he's not prospering i want to be honest with you you know what god told me he said that man though he doesn't love me though he doesn't give to anybody he has wisdom and his business is built up on wisdom this man who loves me and loves people and gives this man is foolish therefore i cannot bless him but wisdom will build your business weakness will not build your business wisdom will you ask god for wisdom amen and build your wisdom your business according to his wisdom build your life by his wisdom don't build your life by on your emotions don't build your your life by rash decisions build it by the wisdom of almighty god i had another life decision to make and years ago i went to different people and they gave me you know counselors they they gave me worldly wisdom i went to my spiritual mother over and over again i said sister vimala can i do this and she said you will never do that i will not allow you to do that it was a life changing decision she stood on the basis of the word of god amen and today my life is stable because of that wisdom brings stability emotional decisions bring instability and in the end destruction are you hearing what i'm saying now let's get back to job 28 and verse 12 verse 13 man knows not the price of it neither is it found in the land of the living verse 14 the deep says wisdom is not in me and the sea says it is not in in me can you see where man is looking for wisdom they're looking for it in libraries they're looking for it in people they're looking for it in in google today you don't need to go anywhere you just look in google it cannot be gotten for gold <laughs> neither shall silver be weighed for the price of it look at this beautiful word that god is giving you 
the wisdom he's talking about the wisdom that will bring you life cannot be bought for gold amen it can only be bought by by you committing yourself to god and saying god i'm not going to move until you speak to me until you show me wisdom it cannot be valued in terms of the gold of ophir or the precious onyx of beryl or the sapphire and it goes on and on and on now go with me to verse 20 so from where then does wisdom come and where is the place of understanding verse 21 it is hidden from the eyes of every living thing concealed even from the birds in the sky abaddon the place of destruction and death says we have only heard the report of it in our ears you, you know i'm giving you some scriptures which have deep meaning but you cannot you can go back and study it now this is very interesting it says death and destruction says we don't know anything about wisdom because wisdom cannot uh, or death and destruction cannot dwell with wisdom amen he says we have only heard reports of it with our ears you go to a family which has destruction you know the cause of it foolishness because wisdom will stabilize your family god only understands the way to wisdom and he knows the place of it wisdom is with god alone oh my goodness isn't this exciting wisdom lives with god alone for he looks to the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens now go to verse 28 but to man he said be- behold the reverential and worshipful fear of the lord that is wisdom and to depart from evil is understanding in a simpler version it says the fear of the lord is wisdom and to shun evil is understanding amen hallelujah it's the beginning the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the lord in jesus name amen you know i tell you if you i in 10 years time i want to see you becoming great and mighty the only way you will become great and mighty is through wisdom i want our children to become strong to become pillars unshakable by any situation it will only happen by wisdom you know my my mother always tells us as her children and parents of our own children she says you know what monkey see monkey do you want your children to grow up you behave that's her advice to her five children monkey see monkey do don't expect your children to be wise if you're foolish are you hearing what i'm saying in the name of jesus you've got to be wise your children should be brought up in the fear of the wisdom of god yeah. they've got to say god more than anything as more than my feelings <laughs> more than my hormones i want wisdom because wisdom built a house builds a house foolishness tears down a house wisdom is the key the principal thing now the man who, who had the greatest wisdom in all the world was king solomon amen he was so wealthy the bible says that he had a entire city in which nothing happened except it was a place where he parked his his uh, chariots it was called the chariot city so great was his wealth isn't that amazing hallelujah he would send his ships out all over the world to bring treasures from different countries and the bible says that in his palace were chimpanzees and peacocks which are not indigenous to israel and theologians believe that he came to sri his ships came to sri lanka as well he had ivory and every precious stone in his palace how did he get it by wisdom his wisdom was so famous that the queen of sheba uh, she had some obviously had some national issues she came to him and the amazing thing is she brought so much of wealth 
uh, uh, from her country and gave it to, to King Solomon. The wisdom of God brings wealth. The wisdom of God will bring you fame and fortune. It will bring you stability in the name of Jesus. So you make a decision today. I've been foolish all my life, but my foolishness ends today. The ending of foolishness is the beginning of God's wisdom. Amen. God, I'm not going to make a single plan unless you speak to me. And I'm going to walk in the, in the ways of God because I want me and my family and all those you have appointed for me to be a blessing to, to be strong. Amen. I want to be an example. I want to become a pillar in the kingdom. So God, I need wisdom. Now we all have faith. Faith is a gift. Amen. Faith rises up at the right occasion. But wisdom, you've got to dig for it. It is like a pearl that is hidden in, in, a, in a big property. You've got to go searching for it. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So this, this evening... I want you to begin opening your heart and saying, God, I want your wisdom. 